and welcome to another episode of Uber. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to integrate storage with your existing Amplify application and also how to start working with AppSync. So it's a lot. So if you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday and every Thursday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the third episode in my series of building an end-to-end -end application with Amplify and AppSync. In the first video, we introduced why Amplify and AppSync are so great together. In the second video, we talk about Cognito, Amazon Cognito, and how to get started with it in your Amplify project. And in this episode, we are going to get started with AppSync and also adding storage. So the application we want to build is a small image library where you upload images and things will happen. You will see in the next episodes. So the first step we want to do is to upload an image and also at the same time we upload the image, we want to store it in an S3 bucket and also using AppSync, we want to store some metadata in Dynamo. So that's what we are going to go do today. And let's go to the slides to a quick intro on what we are building and what tools are we using and then to the code. Today we are going to do kind of two things. First, we are going to connect our uh, application so we can upload the images to S3. And then we are going to create our API and we will hook everything together. So let's start a little bit with the integration with Amazon S3 and Amplify. So. It's as simple as running Amplify at storage. Basically, the Amplify storage module provides a simple mechanism for managing user content for your application in public, protected or private storage packets. The storage category comes with built-in support for Amazon S3. And by doing this, everything will be configured in your S3 buckets and project. For example, the core configuration in your bucket that is very important. If you don't want to use the Amplify CLI and you already have a bucket and you want to create everything manually, I already have a video on doing this with Amplify, React, but the backend and the client are separate and we are not using the Amplify CLI magic. You can go and check that video there. It will help you out. So now we are going to our project where we stopped last time and we are opening a new terminal and we are going to type Amplify add storage and it will ask us what kind of content we want i want to add content like images i will create enter it will ask for a friendly name for the resource i will leave the default that is not very friendly but whatever and then a name for my bucket something random generated i will give access only for authorized users and i will select that these can do all the different things like create update, read and delete. So they will have access to everything. I don't want to have a Lambda tag that triggers when uh, something new uploads to S3. This is something that is pretty cool, but I don't need it. So now basically we have our storage. If we go to Amplify and backend, we will see that we have the storage here. The only thing we are missing is to do Amplify push. And this will push our changes to the cloud and the bucket will get configured as well as the application. So here we can see that we have the storage and we have some resource name and it's going to create it for us. So we give yes and this will take a while. So I will let it run in here and we can go back to the slides and check what we need to do next. So now I want to talk about AWS AppSync. I will not give a detailed introduction to it. I already did it in this other video that I will link here. It was the first video on this series and I show how Amplify integrates really well. And I show there how AppSync integrates very well with Amplify. So I will not talk about that again. So basically the first thing we are going to do is to do Amplify add uh, API. And that will allow us to create the Amplify connection and set up everything. So we are choosing uh, GraphQL. 
And when we get to the schema definition, we are going to put this schema. So this schema is a very simple schema. This is the schema that we are going to use. Uh, it's for uploading pictures. And you can see here that the pictures have an ID, a name, an owner, and a file. And they have some characteristics. So let's look at these uh, important bits in more detail. So the first one is the model. The model is one of the transformers provided by Amplify. I already covered that in the first video, but I think we can go a little bit more in details on what this one does. The GraphQL transformers provide a simple to use abstraction that helps you quickly create backends for your web and mobile applications on AWS. And as I said, we talked about this in the, pre in the previous episode. Basically, object types, types that are annotated with the model are top-level entities in the generated API. They are stored in a Dynamo table and they will have their own table. So you will see after we have this deploy that we will have a picture table. When you use this annotation, you will get all the crude operations, read, write, create, update, and delete operations in the object created for you in the schema and all the resolvers that perform these operations into the Dynamo table. Also, the objects that are annotated with model can be protected with auth and re uh, related to other objects with the connections and search with the search keyword in Elasticsearch. And we will see some of these examples in the next videos. Well, actually, we will see the first example that is the auth uh, annotation now. So auth is another of the directives that Amplify provides. Our objects annotated with these are protected by a set of authorization rules that give you some control on the top level authorization of your API. You may use the auth directive on object type definitions and field definitions in your project schema. When using the auth directive on object type definitions that are also annotated with model, all resolvers that return objects of the type will be protected. When using the auth directive on a field definition, a resolver will be added to the field that authorizes access based on attributes found in the parent type. So in this particular example, we can see we only have one rule that allows the owner to do everything. We could have rules that says allows the owner to delete and create and then uh, everybody else can see it or we can be very specific, we can have groups and things like that. So I will show you a little bit more complex rules as we move forward in this series of episodes. But uh, for now, we are just having a basic rule that everybody that uh, can upload their pictures, see their pictures and no one else than their own picture. And this is the last thing. We have this file at S3 object and S3 object will be another type definition that we are going to create in our GraphQL schema that will have the bucket, the region and the key. This is information from our S3 object, the image that we are uploading to S3. So in this case, we can see how AppSync, Amplify and S3 all combine into a nice uh, GraphQL schema with these annotations and these things. So let's go to the code and add our apps, uh, app sync and create this GraphQL model. So uh, we see here that our storage already has completed. So we can do amplify add API, we choose GraphQL, we give a name, we leave the default. Then we need to give a authorization type, we choose cognito user pools, and that's kind of it. And then it asks you, do you have an annotated schema? No, I don't. Do I want help? Yes, please. I will just pick any because I really have my annotated schema, but I want to paste it. So I want to edit my schema now. And here my schema open. I will paste the schema that I want, the one I just show you there. So this is the schema I just show you, the picture with the model and the auth and all the characteristics and then the S3 object. And this is the schema I want. I save it and when I'm ready, I press enter to continue. And that's it. Now we will see in our backend that we have an API and in there you will find the schema that you just created. So that's good. Now we need to push these changes to the cloud. So we do amplify, push. 
and now you'll see a new category appear API with some name and the operation create we will say yes please and this will uh, push our changes to the cloud but now it will ask us some questions and it will ask us if we want to generate that code yes we do we want it in JavaScript and we just leave all the defaults because why to change them they're good and now this will take a while so while this goes on I will close my terminal and I will go and start working on my uh, frontend so my frontend will be in the source in components I will create a new page a new file that I will call upload image or upload picture as you want and I will also create the CSS for it And in here, I will add all the logic I need to upload a picture. So I will paste something. First thing I'm going to paste is uh, some dependencies that you will see it in a moment. Then I'm going to create a component and export it. And then inside a component, we are going to add a couple of things. The first thing is render. So here we have the visual part. Uh, please upload an image and we will have this input type that is the file and when something changed we will call this method on change and then we will show the image so it's a very very simple component so now we need to work on the on change and let's do that so on the on change what we are going to do the first thing we are going to do is to get the image from the event so here it is and well, you can print it in the screen if you want to see it. And then we are uploading it using the storage class. This is very simple. It's, this is using the amplify library storage and we just do storage put and then we give a name and this will upload it to the bucket that it was configured automatically. And because this is a public thing, it will be put in the public directory. So now after this is uploaded, what we are going to do is to basically uh, upload this image to the database. So I will copy a chunk. I will copy a chunk of code. Basically, then when this is successful, we will just update the state. We need to add the state because this will be showing our image here. So we need to have some kind of state. Uh, you can print the result in the screen. You don't need to. And then we are constructing the image object that is the one that is going to be saved in the uh, API it will be sent to the API and will be created and we are giving a name the file name and then we are giving like bucket region and key and these are coming from this AWS export file that has all your um, kind of secrets of your application so please don't put this file in github uh, it's important, so don't put it in GitHub. But from there, you can get the name of your bucket, the region, and then this is a public, so you will have to do public file name, and then you have completed your object. You can print it in the screen if you want. I like to print things now and then to see them, but you don't need to. And then I'm calling this add image to database that we can also copy in here. And basically, this is. Um, just calling this API library with the GraphQL create picture and with the image that we just created. And that's it, it's super simple. And when it's ready, it will show in the console, added, completed, nothing strange. And the last thing we are missing is the state management for the file, so I will add that. Good, so now our upload page is ready. Uh, our image is ready. So now I will update it, uh, up JS with the right information so we can see it in our menu. So we will add here the import for the file and then we will add it in our nav bar. Now when everything is ready, we can go and try it and think we don't need to do anything else. Let's see if it completed terminal. So the endpoint is ready so let's go to chrome and let's see it's refreshed already and you can see here that it says upload image let's do first inspect the console so i'm putting all these console logs and i will choose a file i just choose a random file i have in my computer 
and we will see that it uploaded and it was added to the database. So now if you go to your AWS console and you open the AppSync in the right uh, project, you can go to, for example, a schema and you can see the schema. So here you can see everything that AppSync has created for you and amplify with those annotations. So here you can see the type that you have right, the picture and the S3 object are here, but then there is so many other things. There are all the queries, all the mutations, all the subscriptions, all the types, here everything it is. Then if you go to data sources, you can see the table that was created for you, the picture table. So if we open it, we will see that we have um, one picture, that is the one that we just upload. And here you can see the information, the name, the owner. This was populated from my uh, name on, on Cognito. This is my Cognito user. So I didn't need to type it anywhere. Then the bucket and the key and the region, everything is there as well. And if I add more pictures, you will see more appearing here. So let's pick another one. Let's see if it's different. No. Yes, it's a different picture. And then if I go to Dynamo, we can see that now we have two pictures. We have the number four, that is the one with the that I just last uploaded, and the number five that was the first one. And then if I go to S3, we can also see that the pictures have been uploaded there. So you go to S3, you go to the bucket that was created by Amplify. There you can see uh, public and you can see the two images uploaded there for you. This was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. As always, the code is in the description box. You can go and check it out. The GitHub repo has the different commits for all the videos, so it will get updating as we move forward. This is the third episode on an ongoing series, so there are more things to come. In the next episodes, we are going to create the view for visualizing all these images in the image gallery and we are adding a little bit more logic like edits and changes so we can see the functionalities of AppSync and as well other uh, categories that Amplify has to offer. If you have something that you would like to see in this series, now is the time to get it on the comments and let me know because I'm building this series right now and even though if I have finished building it, I'm always happy to add more videos on these topics. And please, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it. I hope everybody does a thumb up because that really helps my channel to grow and for YouTube algorithm to know that I exist. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.